Galahad, Knight of the Holy Shield, son of Sir Lancelot, and Mash's heroic spirit. But what about the Galahad of Fate Grand Order? How well does he compare to his mythological counterpart, and what grade would I give his depiction? Let's do this. Galahad is a shielder class servant, the first and only one we have, though others like Achilles might qualify for it. This class is for servants who tend to fight very defensively, being more about protection than attack. As for whether or not Galahad qualifies, sure. The real Galahad did use a shield, as knights tended to do, and was widely regarded as the perfect knight, especially when compared to other round table knights who had engaged in affairs or racked up huge body counts. Funnily enough, the shield that Galahad is said to have had was a white shield with a red cross, the same as the Knights Templar. Since the stories of Galahad originated during the same time as when the Templars were active, chances are a writer somewhere just gave Galahad that shield design, since they associated it with the then well-regarded Templars. Galahad could also potentially be a saber, too, having claimed a sword in circumstances quite similar to King Arthur, the whole sword in the stone business. Anyway, Galahad being a shielder is fine. Getting into his character design, we have both Galahad himself and Mash to look at. While there are clear differences, both of them do wear a similar sort of armor, largely black plate armor with purple cloth. The general vibe this gives off is of a knight that is particularly fancy or noble, especially since purple tends to be associated with royalty and wealth. Galahad was widely seen as the most pure of the round table knights, so giving him a very distinctive look does make sense. He also looks noticeably younger than any of the other Round Table Knights, which also checks out since he actually joined the Round Table at age 15, and he only lived a few years beyond that. Galahad being younger meshes well with his host, Mash Kyrielite. The two of them have many similarities. As for the shield, we are told numerous times throughout the story that it is the Round Table itself, and considering that Galahad was one of those knights, this should be self-explanatory. Really, there isn't much for me to say about Galahad's design other than that it works to portray what he is meant to be, a knight with an air of nobility and wisdom about him. Moving into his skill set, Galahad's first skill is Honorable Wall of Snowflakes, increasing defense for three turns and providing a one-time damage cut to all allies. This skill is meant to be for supporting allies, using one's resolve and mental strength to shore up everyone's defenses. As for the name, this is a little difficult. There certainly aren't any stories about Galahad venturing into areas where snowflakes would be found. The best I can come up with is, well, since snow is white, and white is often associated with purity, and since Galahad is considered to be pure, yeah, that's all I've got. There's just not enough information here. Galahad's second skill is Obscurant Wall of Chalk, giving one turn of invincibility and up to 20% MP charge for a single ally. This skill, thankfully, is a bit more clear. We've heard Camelot described as a chalk castle before, and we got to see it for ourselves during the Camelot Singularity. So there's that clear connection between this skill and the walls of Camelot, walls that will not fall so long as they are defended. Lastly, Galahad's third skill is Shield of Rousing Resolution, a taunt skill that focuses enemies upon him for a turn, as well as increased MP gain for a turn. Now while Galahad does have the shield, the skill actually has more to do with M.A.S.H. Specifically, it is her resolve to protect her allies from harm manifested into a skill. It certainly does make sense, since being a defender is what M.A.S.H. does best, but it could just as easily work for Galahad, too. A solid skill. Galahad's noble phantasm is Lord Camelot, whereupon the shield is deployed, creating a massive defensive barrier against incoming attacks. This MP increases defense and provides a damage cut to all allies for three turns, with the defense increasing depending upon overcharge, and increasing the attack of all allies except himself for three turns. Really, this MP is the culmination of the rest of Galahad's kit, which is all about protection and playing defense. The strength of the defense is determined by the will of the person using the shield. Since the round table of Arthurian legend and the ideals they supposedly valued have lived on, I guess it makes sense that the shield, which is the actual round table, would not break. Kind of an embodiment of how the ideal of a court of honorable knights has become immortal, and so long as people continue to value that, the shield will resist all attempts to break it. One thing though, apparently when Galahad himself uses this MP, he can reflect attacks back upon his enemies. Sadly, we don't get this in FGO, though chances are the reason why is because it would just be too overpowered. I mean, imagine if Mash's shield reflected Gaetia's MP back to him. It would have been an awesome visual and would have spared us some heartbreak, but it also would have killed the drama of the story, you know? Galahad's craft essence is... he doesn't have one. Neither does Mash. Well, that was quick. Moving on, now it is time to get into characterization, and the real meat of this video. 
because while there isn't really much to say about Galahad's design and skill set beyond it's fine, there is plenty to say about his characterization. So first, a quick rundown about Galahad. Galahad is the son of Lancelot and Elaine of Corbenic, one of several Elaines in Arthurian legend. I'm going to save the full discussion about this for Lancelot's video, how many times have I said that now? But the circumstances of Galahad's conception are more than a little questionable. Supposedly this all happened because of a prophecy that this child would become the greatest of all knights, but as I said, this is for a different video. Anyway, Galahad and Lancelot didn't actually meet until he was 15, where they fight and Galahad wins, pretty much the only time Lancelot loses to anyone in a fair fight. Lancelot then knights Galahad and brings him to Camelot, whereupon he passes a number of impossible trials that instantly prove to all that Galahad is amazing. But as soon as he joins the Round Table, the court is given a vision of the Holy Grail, and so begins the quest to obtain it. Being one of the few pure knights of the Round Table alongside Percival and Bors, pure in the sense of not having sex, these three are the ones who actually reach the Grail. Everyone else fails somewhere along the way. Galahad's only wish is to choose the moment of his own death, which he does shortly afterwards after having a religious experience. Ascending to heaven, he bids Percival and Bors farewell, and since Percival dies shortly afterwards, it is left up to Bors to tell the story. If this sounds like a really short bit of the overall tale of Arthurian legend, it's because it is. Indeed, the story of Galahad was one of the later additions made to the story, Arthurian legend being something that developed over several centuries during the Middle Ages. He pretty much just pops in as the perfect knight foretold by prophecy, undertakes the quest for the Holy Grail, and then he is gone, conveniently exiting the plot right before everyone starts killing each other. So with that primer out of the way, how does the Galahad of Arthurian legend compare to the one in Fate Grand Order? Well, we don't actually get to see him very often, since we spend far more time with the human his spirit inhabits, Mash Curialite. However, Galahad does pop out on a few occasions. When initially summoned during the Demi-Servant experiments, which we see during the prologue episode of the Babylonia anime, Galahad emerges within Mash and promptly tries to kill Marius Burianomosphere. Considering that the guy was doing experiments on human children, it makes sense that Galahad would take serious issue with this, as many others do when they later find out about this secret. Unable to kill Marysbury, Galahad instead goes dormant, refusing to work with Chaldea, which he rightly saw as an organization with some serious morality issues. This, of course, changes at the opening of the game, where Galahad chooses to save Mash after the explosion. At this point, Marysbury was dead, and so what remained was just a young girl struggling to stay alive, and someone who, in a number of ways, is actually quite similar to Galahad himself. How so? Well, Galahad grew up in a monastery away from both of his parents, and was brought up sheltered away from the rest of the world. Not knowing much of anything about how people in the real world lived, his upbringing centered around religious piety. By the time Galahad came of age and left at the age of 15, this upbringing had taken solid root within him, and so even with coming to know the outside world, he remained apart from it in many ways. This isn't quite an exact match for Mash's own upbringing, but it isn't too far off either. Being raised in Chaldea's labs, she literally did not leave the place until the first ray shift, and didn't see clear skies in the present day until after the defeat of Getia. Kept isolated until the arrival of Dr. Roman, or later members of Team A, her knowledge of the world largely came from books and second-hand knowledge. This gives Mash a different outlook than most others, though she is more influenced by the people she encounters, rather than the religious upbringing of Galahad. So you could say that both Galahad and Mash were kept away from the evils of the world, and so grew up uncorrupted by its vices or having much in the way of self-interest. The story where Galahad's personality emerges most is, of course, during the Camelot Singularity. Galahad is disgusted to find the Round Table Knights, though following a mission that might seem like the best option in a terrible situation, is nevertheless engaging in some seriously immoral acts. Seeing what the Round Table is doing in the Singularity, Galahad makes it his mission to put an end to the madness, and so pushes Mash towards that direction. Her fight with Lancelot is, of course, very personal, since Lancelot is Galahad's father, and like an original Arthurian legend, Galahad wins, leading to Lancelot switching sides. As for that whole deadbeat dad stuff, well, it is technically true, but Galahad's mother wasn't really in his life either, and the circumstances of Galahad's conception make it pretty understandable why Lancelot wanted to keep his distance from Galahad, or more specifically, Galahad's mother. Again, saving the full discussion for my eventual Lancelot video. But after the defeat of Getia, Galahad fades into the background, and Mash finds herself without his powers. Now, there are a number of possible explanations for this, and I don't believe we have a clear answer just yet. 
First and foremost, well, Mash did die fighting Gatia. Yes, she was brought back by Foe, sacrificing his sentience. But was Foe able to bring the connection to Galahad back too? Since these issues started immediately following this, there is the chance that Mash's connection to Galahad came back wrong, or otherwise needs to be re-established. We also have Moonlight Lost Room, where Galahad makes a brief appearance and basically tells the protagonist to give up, that the world is doomed, and it is because they defeated Getia. Galahad is extremely cryptic here, but considering that his help was vital for overcoming the singularities and defeating Getia, it does seem really off for him to suddenly say, you shouldn't have done that. So, uh, we shouldn't have restored humanity? If we shouldn't have done that, why did Galahad help us do it? I think Galahad is showing his age, or lack thereof, because his logic needs some work. Lastly, and probably the most accurate explanation, is that Mash herself has lost the resolve that she once had. Having overcome the clear and obvious crisis that was the incineration of humanity, Mash's resolve to fight just isn't there anymore, not helped at all by the more morally grey situation with the Lost Belts. It has already been stated that it is one's resolve that is vital for wielding Galahad's abilities, and so without it, of course Mash would struggle to wield such abilities again. The one time when this resolve is restored, it's during Lost Belt 6 when Mash loses her memories, and ends up finding a new caused champion, but without her memories holding her back. Even after her memory is restored though, Mash still is able to use Galahad's abilities like before. However, in the time since then, the Ordnak suit has become more viable, especially now with the Black Barrel that proved so useful in Olympus and against Kernunos. How much Galahad's powers will remain relevant in future story content remains to be seen. Will he make a comeback, or is this part in the story largely over? Time will tell, I suppose. So where does that leave us? Well, it is pretty difficult to assess Galahad's characterization when he almost never appears. Aside from that brief appearance in Moonlight Lost Room, and a background appearance on Tristan's final Ascension art, we never really physically see Galahad in FGO. We do see Mash, of course, being one of the main protagonists, but she is Galahad's vessel, not Galahad himself. They are similar in a number of ways, but are ultimately completely different characters. Galahad is a distant presence in FGO, more of a collection of ideals rather than a fully formed person. This makes him seem rather alien to us, a being we know the existence of, but which we see so little and hear even less from, that it is hard to grasp that such a person could actually exist. And you know what? This seems very on point to me. The Galahad of Arthurian legend seems less like a person, and more like one's imagination of an ideal. His presence in the overall story is quite small, being more of a concept rather than a fully-fledged character. And really, that's what Galahad is in FGO, too. He is part of the story, but it is Mash who does the real narrative work. And now for the verdict. What grade would I give Galahad's depiction in Fate Grand Order? Well, it is very solid. His characterization and skill set work well for the character, emphasizing a focus upon an ideal of a pure knight with one singular focus, in this case being a protector. As for characterization, Galahad's presence is largely in the background, but what we do get is consistent with how he is in Arthurian legend. He is the perfect knight who holds virtue and piety above everything else, to the point of making Galahad seem barely human. Through M.A.S.H., he is able to have a notable influence upon events of the story, especially during the Camelot Singularity. But outside of the moments where he makes himself known, Galahad's importance lies more in his influence rather than anything he actually does. M.A.S.H. is who is truly important to FGO's story, not Galahad, which, from my perspective, is pretty much just like Galahad's role in Arthurian legend. Is Galahad a notable part of Arthurian legend? Yes. Is he a major part of the plot? I would argue, not really. And so for a final grade, I'm going to give Galahad, the Knight of the Holy Shield, an A. His depiction in Fate Grand Order is very much like how he appears in Arthurian legend, the perfect knight who lives for his ideals to such a degree that the human is hard to see. Whether or not such a perfect idealized being is interesting, I'll leave that for you to decide. And if you would like to learn more about someone who is also idealized for their purity but remains very much human, check out my video on Jeanne d'Arc here. Until next time.